Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. It's been a little while since I've, uh, well, since I've done any video really, rather than just uh, one of these. Uh, basically, I've just been not very well. Um, unfortunately, in this house, someone has been ill at one point or another for the last six weeks. Um, and um, yeah, it's been, it's been tough trying to get um, videos made and to do any hobbying. Um, but here we are so what i have managed to do though is complete another unit for the wars of the roses kingmaker project and um, this is Sir henry neville of heversham and uh, i've done a unit with him so what i thought we'd do because i haven't done one for a while i'll do another sort of hobby and history video so show you the model talk a little bit about the history of the character we're depicting and what happened to him and um, and then actually have a look at the models themselves and just show them off a little bit so it won't be a super long video um, but um, let's just get into it so here you have it so this is Sir Henry Neville this is one of the cousins of the Kingmaker and the Neville family was quite large so there he is he's got that typical Neville cross on his livery and um, I just basically just wanted to have a bit of fun. Now he was um, present in quite a few battles, especially supporting um, John Neville, Lord Montagu, who I've completed as well, but I'll be doing a separate um, history video on, though his is liable to be a lot longer than this. I should probably say as well that this history video will be quite short. There isn't this guy's history, like a lot of people in the Wars of Roses, ended rather abruptly. Um, so there he is and i'm really pleased i've done the normal thing of putting them free base but what we'll do i'll put popping back on here we'll just have a look at the actual history of the individual and then we'll come back and actually have a look at some of the models sir henry neville of heversham was born around 1437 and he was the son of george neville the first baron latimer who is in turn son of ralph neville the first earl of westmoreland this made him first cousin of Richard Neville, 16th Earl of Warwick, the person that we all know as the Kingmaker. This also made him cousin to Edward IV, George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, and Richard Plantagenet, the Duke of Gloucester, the future Richard III. Sir Henry was a prominent figure in the Neville forces and fought for the House of York and his family in the battles of Hedgley Moor and Hexham in 1464. The Yorkists in both these battles were led by his cousin, John Neville, the Marquis Montagu, who was carving out a reputation in the north as Edward's enforcer, bringing the last remnant of Lancastrian resistance to account. When his cousin, the Earl of Warwick, rebelled against King Edward IV, Sir Henry also changed sides and joined the other retainers of the Earl of Warwick, leading the rebel uprising against the royalist forces of William Herbert, the Earl of Pembroke. You can see a little bit more about that in my video on the Battle of Edgecote, and I'll leave a link up here for that. The armies would meet near the town of Bainbury in what has now become known as the Battle of Edgecott. Now, there's a bit of a uh, story with Henry Neville. So the night before the battle, he was leading the rebel scouts and Hall's Chronicle states that Sir Henry Neville, son to the Lord Latimer, took with him certain light horsemen and skirmished with the Welshmen in the evening, even before their camp where he did diverse valiant feats of arms. Now, to quote Graham Evans, who's done a brilliant book on um, the Battle of Edgecott, basically, he pushed his luck a little bit. His men were operating very close to the Royalist camp, and somehow Henry appears to have become separated from the rest of his men. As we can see that the Chronicle states that he performed valiant feats of arms, which basically means he was attacking and killing Royalist camp guards. Hall's Chronicle then goes on, but a little too hardy. He went so far forward that he was taken and yielded, and yet cruelly slain, which vengeful act the Welshman saw ruled the next day or night. So basically what we have here is a noble who has gone overexcited, spurred his way into the enemy guards, become separated from his men, and then when he's realised his predicament, he's now surrendered. Obviously, the Royalist Guards were less than pleased with this knight who had just killed many of their comrades and why he thought he would be well treated in a series of conflicts that claims so many of noble birth through execution and violence is slightly perplexing. The Chronicle states that he was cruelly slain, though I can imagine the Guards probably looked on this slightly differently, as a few minutes before this noble had been riding down their friends. I imagine his end was at the end of more than one poleaxe or billhook. 
The Royalist forces, however, would pay a cost the next day. No, not necessarily in retaliation for the killing of Henry Neville, once the Royalists were defeated in the Battle of Edgecott, his death wouldn't have helped the cause of the captured Royalist commanders, who were in turn executed on the Earl of Warwick's orders. Now I'm sure that somewhere in there, part of the reason is going to be a bit of revenge for the Neville family. The final resting place of Henry Neville is in the Beauchamp Chapel of St Mary's Church in Warwick. Sir Henry was married to Joan, the daughter of John Boucher, the first Baron Berners. The couple had at least two sons, the eldest of whom went on to become Richard Neville, the second Baron Latimer, who would go on to serve in the court of Henry VIII and was one of the nobles who petitioned the Pope on behalf of the King to uh, consider his divorce from Catherine of Aragon. So, here he is. This is Henry Neville. Now, I did consider putting him on a horse to maybe represent him riding through the, the guards at Edgecote and, um, and then and I've been dragged off his horse and brutally killed. However, I changed my mind and decided to have him leading a unit of foot knights, of men at arms, and um, this could represent him at, say, Hedgley Moor or Hexham, where he's following his cousin John Neville. And what I've done here, like all of these kits, it this is all a kit bash between the Foot Knights kit, the Wars of Roses infantry kit, and the Light Cavalry kit from Perry Miniatures, and the Mercenaries as well. So I've just gone through and had some fun. So what I tried to do as well was, I realised that after I'd stuck all these together, that I didn't actually have any livery coats on them, except for um, the guy that I was using to be Henry. So to compensate from that, I, I've really varied the armour tones. I think I've got four different main armour tones in here. So we have uh, Henry Neville himself, and I've given him this sort of bronzed armour look. Um, there was sort of bronzing on armour or gilding. Um, I don't know if he had any. I just wanted him to stand out and for it looked cool. So he's getting it, and I armed him with a with a pole axe. Um, there's this type of armor here, like I've done on his standard bearer, which I've done to show sort of more expensive armor. So that's a basic base coat of um, Vallejo color color chrome, and then washed with Space Wolves gray, and then highlighted again with the chrome color. Whereas these armors here are done with uh, based with lead belcher, the GW paint and then either have um, the Army Painter Strong Tone Quickshade wash on them or they have Basilicanium Grey and it just gives a nice tonal variation to the armour and I'm pleased with it. Decided to give this guy a painted helmet because I hadn't done one for a while and then I've done the same sort of basing that I've done on the, the whole um, army, um, or certainly Warwick's division which is a sort of a moorland look with bits of scrub and leaf litter and then of course freezy water flags for uh, for his coat of arms and i just had to play around a little bit with his plumes so i'm very pleased with how he's come out um let me just pop this in next we just have another base of these foot knights and uh but again you can see i've had a bit of a play just playing around with the armor colors actually putting a colored helmet on the temptation to do colored helmets across the whole unit is, is quite quite big but um, I resisted uh, and the main thing here is that I've um, converted uh, one of these banners with the staff across the top the flag here is from freezy uh, no this one's sorry from Pete's flags not freezy water that's freezy water this one's Pete's flags um, and he supplies this lovely one of the bear and ragged staff of Warwick so I thought why not so all of that is there is another spear that I've cut down and just stuck across the top so that would be there to stiffen it and even though the flag would be stiffened because this corner isn't supported I've done that flapping in the wind and also given him a painted visor so very very pleased with that one and then over here, just a very simple base of foot knights. Again, mixing the armors. Some fun with the faces. Some have got more expensive armor. Some look particularly shoddy. Um, but as a unit, it's it's fairly straightforward, and it, it kind of just again is just you know playing around with some of these characters from history and. You know, find it. You know, he's never going to have any command stats, but I can pop him in leading a unit, and there he is represented on the table. So, um, yeah. Anyway, quite a quick one, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. As I say I've got another one coming for uh, John Neville. That's just taking quite a while to write because his history is significantly more um, complicated than um, this guy. Not, and then eventually we'll do Warwick, and that'll end up in a multi-part video. 
As far as the Kingmaker project in general, I am actually on the wind down now. It was going to be my Wars of the Roses project for this year. I've done about eight units for it, plus um, cannons um, and some uh, command bases as well. And you've got to remember that that's that's actually just one division within my within my army. Um, I just wanted to build enough of it that it can act as an opposing army if I wanted it to. So I've actually now got to start thinking about building the Kingmaker himself. I've been gathering some parts together um, and I think I'm going to be effectively kit bashing him and converting him from quite a few sets. So if people are interested in seeing videos on the progress of that, then let me know down below in the comments. Um, if you don't care, <laughs> and, um, then I can just get on and, and show the, um, the finished product. Um, the other Wars of the Roses game, I know I haven't posted it up yet. Um, that's very simply because we haven't done it. Both me and my opponent have been ill or there's, there's been things going on in our um, personal lives that meant that we just haven't been able to get the games do done. But we know what the moves are and the next game is coming. We, we think we've got it sorted. Um, and in the meantime, there'll be plenty of other battles happening. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm going to sign out. I hope you guys are all keeping well and um, I'll catch you guys all again soon. Cheers.